welcome to Friends in Fiction, five best-selling authors, endless stories. Friends in Fiction is a Facebook Live program with five best-selling novelists whose common love of reading, writing, and independent bookstores bound them together with chats, author interviews, and fascinating insider talk about publishing and writing. These friends discuss the books they've written, the books they're reading now, and the art of storytelling. If you love books and you're curious about the writing world, you're in the right place. Best-selling novelists Mary Kay Andrews, Kristen Harmel, Christy Woodson Harvey, Patty Callahan Henry, and Mary Alice Monroe are five longtime friends with more than 80 published books to their credit. At the start of the pandemic, they got together for a virtual happy hour to talk about their books, their favorite bookstores, writing, reading, and publishing in this new uncharted territory. They're still talking, and they've added fascinating discussions with other best-selling novelists. So join them live on their Friends and Fiction Facebook group page every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, or listen and view later at your leisure on their podcast or on their website at www.friendsandfiction.com. Hi, welcome, everybody. This is Friends in Fiction, five best-selling novelists, endless stories. We are five writers and friends whose common love of reading, writing, and independent bookstores binds us together, along with our love of a few, for a few. A lot. <laughs> no, it's impromptu. Along with our love for a few other things like kids and decorating and laughter and drinking and supporting each other. Um, <laughs> We love you guys. And this is our weekly Friends and Fiction show. I'm Mary Kay Andrews, and my latest novel is Hello Summer. I'm Kristen Harmel, and my latest novel is The Book of Lost Names. I'm Christy Woodson Harvey, and my latest novel is Feels Like Falling. I am Patty Callahan Henry, and my latest novel is Becoming Mrs. Lewis. And hello, I'm Mary Alice Monroe, and my latest novel is On Ocean Boulevard. And as you probably already have noticed, we have an incredible guest tonight. We're so thrilled to have New York Times bestselling author Emily Giffen with us to talk about her new book. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, girls. The, time, the lies that bind. But first, a little bit of shameless self-promotion from a brazen hussy. That would be me. <laughs> tonight, And no, I am not a pregnant except with book. I'm so excited tonight to reveal the cover, cover of my new novel, coming May 4th from St. Martin's Press, the newcomer. The book is set in a mom and pop motel on the Florida Gulf Coast. The newcomer is the story of Letty Carnahan, who discovers a body of her younger sister on the floor of her posh New York townhouse and her sister's four-year-old daughter, Maya, upstairs, wailing for her murdered mother. Letty flees the city with Maya in tow to an uncertain fate at a motel called the Murmuring Surf, where she encounters a cynical and suspicious local detective whose mother owns the motel, plus the motel's regulars, a tight-knit flock of snowbirds and retirees who regard the mysterious newcomer in their midst with more than a little hostility. We're going to have a special offer for you tonight um, for folks who um, pre-order the newcomer from our bookstore, which is Acapella Books. I'll tell you about that later. Now we're going to switch the spotlight back to our guest, Emily Giffen, who I met decades ago at a book event in Atlanta. With when her first novel, every something borrowed. I'm so excited. I'm just blathering. <laughs> something borrowed. <laughs> something borrowed was published to huge acclaim, and shortly thereafter became a hit movie starring Kate Hudson and my pretend husband John Krasinski. <laughs> Emily, tell me he's as nice as he seemed like he'd be. He was very nice. Okay, he's very, my pretend husband. Very intelligent too. Shortly after that. Emily, you know, in her spare time, managed to birth twin sons and then a daughter <laughs> and to proceed to turn out an uninterrupted, uninterrupted string of New York Times bestselling novels. Now, as it happens, our mutual friend, Patty Callahan Henry, was also at that event that night and introduced us. And I only know that because Patty told me. <laughs> <laughs> My memory of that night is pretty cloudy because I'd flown down from Raleigh where we briefly lived three days after having some non-essential lady bits removed. 
So I think I was living at the time on pain meds and applesauce. A few years later, Emily and I passed like ships in the night when I moved publishing houses to St. Martin's Press and Emily packed up and left. <laughs> um, as our rabid fans know, Emily is an Anglophile with an enduring love for the British monarchy, as well as a diehard Demon Deacons fan. A Chicago, all sports, right Em? You're all sports, right? Pretty much, I like college basketball the best, but you're doing, you're, you're nailing it, you're nailing it. <laughs> a Chicago native, she graduated summa cum laude from Wake Forest University and the University of Virginia Law School. After law school, she practiced litigation for a large Manhattan law firm and wrote a novel in her spare time, as one does. As one does. Later yeah, she but that, the novel that I wrote in my spare time as a lawyer was rejected. Well, the novel oh, yeah. in my spare time is reported. Well, well, we just have to, let's just be accurate here, though. That okay. one was rejected, and then the one I wrote it full time was okay. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> not, not my first time. I've never interrupted someone's bio before, but I feel like I can do that. With you can do that. You can do that with us. That's encouraging yeah. for people to hear that. You know? This is your stage. We yeah. all interrupt each other. Okay. <laughs> Something borrowed came out in 2004, which prompted her. Is this right to vow to never practice law again? That's pretty accurate. <laughs> 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 went on to pen eight more New York Times bestsellers, including Something Blue, Baby Proof, Love the One You're With, Heart of the Matter, Where We Belong, The One and Only, First Comes Love, and All We Ever Wanted. I could go on, but if you have a question for Emily, post it during this chat on our Friends in Fiction Facebook page, and we'll post, we'll be pulling a few questions shortly. But before we get too deep into this, I want to remind our viewers of the reason we got to start it on this endeavor our love for indie bookstores. Each week we highlight an indie bookstore and tonight Emily has chosen Acapella Books in Atlanta as our indie bookseller. So they are graciously giving you 10% off all of our books. The link to the bookstore is posted on the Friends in Fiction Facebook page. So we hope you'll go over there and order books. Welcome Emily, finally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all awesome. for having me. So glad to have you. This is so much fun. Yeah, we're going to talk about um, stuff in a few minutes. Okay. Um, tell me how... Wait, I have to say something first. I have to say a few things. For, uh, thank you. And I'm so glad that my readers and readers in general are joining us. Um, but uh, Mary Alice has the best voice for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that so thank you. We know. That's very yeah. kind. Come on. They're like, probably I'm, I'm talking to my son, George, about my headphones. They're somewhere in my bedroom. Um, well, yes, you're just like hiring just, a professional, and we already have one, so we didn't. Know. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Way. Um, yeah so it's very you. happy. I love you. you. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> See, Emily, tell us about how COVID has affected your personal and writing life. Remote schooling, virtual bookstore, barn mm -hmm. store. You know. How many of you are, I know you're not Mary Kay, but how, how many of you are introverts on here? <laughs> yeah, just in terms of my life or just personality? Like I just, mean, I guess I'll, my answer is because I'm such an introvert and I prefer to sort of hide out, um, it hasn't affected my life as much as I think it's affected some people's. Like I, right. as much as I love going on book tour from the standpoint of, you know, act, once I'm in the moment, like it's a classic introvert. Once I get into the moment and I'm like, you know, talking to my readers and I'm at an event, like I have a blast, but I just, it takes so much energy for me to get up, to want to like get on an airplane and then go into yeah. those situations that there was a, like a lot of relief involved when they said, you, you know, you can't, my book came out on June 2nd, which it, it, I don't know if you remember was blackout Tuesday. Um, so nothing kind of happened that week, which was oh, which was yeah. wonderful for the for the movement. Um, and and I there was a huge part of me that was like, I don't have to, I don't have to like leave my house. I don't have to <laughs> take my pajamas off. Okay, don't worry about it. I know what you mean. No, no, no. I think we all so there was worried that. about it. Um, but yeah. of course, I mean that's just kind of you know one angle of it. I, I think like everyone, it's been. Um, you know, it's been really challenging. I mean, the, the, you, you go through cycles where you're so, you know, you're so worried and um, then you think you have it under control and then you think like, okay, things are going to open back up and then they're not. And right now I have three teenagers. My uh, twin sons are 16 and my daughter is 13. She's very, she's very social and really likes to be with her friends. 
Um, the boys are probably a little bit more like me, but that's a hard thing to manage. I don't know what ages. I, I know some of your ages of your children. I know Patty's kids, um, but you know, I think that's that's uh, it's been challenging. But I I've noticed that we've had as a family, we've become we've had really deep conversations. I think that's kind of been a theme throughout a th mm -hmm. yeah. many families where you, you know, you don't have anything but each other. So you might as well dig really deep and have um, really, uh, you know, important conversations that we might not have otherwise mm -hmm. had, or at least not in the same so way true. or the same intensity. So overall, you know, I feel, I feel bad saying this because of course there's so much suffering out there and I, I wish we could get back to normal and, everyone could be healthy again. But for, for us personally, it's been sort of a quiet, nice time. Yeah. 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 That's a very long winded answer. Sorry. No, no, no I mean, answer. very important yeah. things. I, I do feel that now that we're coming to the uh, through it at the end of summer, that we are actually seeing there were moments that were valuable and lessons that we learned. I think that was a very true answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It has. but now the kids are back in school now because we live in Georgia. So Atlanta, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, red state, everything's pretty open. You know, we're back five days a week. So knock on wood that um, everything sort of stays that way. But um, yeah, it's just, it's been, the, you know, if you think about it, like if I said to you right now, 2017, tell me about what you did in 2017. I don't know about you, but my mind goes like totally blank. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, you have to really kind of think about 2017, what happened then? Or like 2014 or 20, hell, even 2019. I know, right? <laughs> and then you say 2020 and it's like, you know, forever. Oh, the whole summer. year has just been so, yeah. so crazy. But that's a great summer. year, great year for books. I mean, great year to escape yeah. in, in literature yeah. and books. That's yep. true. Okay, so for the rest of you, it's September and it's semi fallish I know we have all been dashing to the finish line with our upcoming novels. Can everybody give me a progress report? Because I'm taking names. <laughs> <laughs> you know where we are. She <laughs> does that. Yeah, it's, it's on your permanent personal record. Uh, <laughs> how about you? Oh, Christy. I'm going to show the cover, but I have ARCs. So Hi. I'm really excited. Awesome. Yeah, and the cover comes out in a couple weeks. And hopefully you guys will be... Well, you guys, my friends on the screen, but also you guys, my friends on Facebook, will be um, able to get some of these and win some of them. So I'm super excited. I feel very accomplished when it's in my hand. It's like a real thing at that point, right? Oh, gosh. That just gave me a heart palpitation. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, how about you? I think I'm at about 77,000 words in my manuscript. Um, we have a title, which is a, a big development. It's going to be called mm -hmm. The Forest of Vanishing Stars. So that'll be out next wow. summer. Um, and and but, but well, thank you. But the most important thing is I set a goal for myself that if I wrote 8,000 words this weekend, I could get a new pair of shoes. And I did. So the shoes are on the, <laughs> you the most important thing of all. And you're talking. Yeah. Can you get a picture out of the shoes? <laughs> But what, what, what's that? <laughs> I'm gonna put a picture up. And yeah. Next, next week I'll wear them and like kick my heels up in the okay. show. No problem. <laughs> Patty, what about you? Um, I got my page proofs for the March book, and so we've been spending Emily. The, this five of us have been doing this thing called morning sprints, where we check in with each other every morning to make sure we're writing or doing whatever our goal is. And so for this whole week, it's been my page proofs for Surviving Savannah. And I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm reading them out loud from front to back. Has anybody, who else has? Yes. So I do that and I feel like I catch 10 times more yep. mistakes. It's crazy. Yeah. It's terrible you when, you're loud when you're doing your audio book. Yeah. That, that's not a good time to catch them. No. You know, I read out loud after every chapter. Like I read it loud Ooh. every day. Yeah. Ew, wow. Like I'm every, like, I'm, the sound. Like in dialogue. a very, like, you know, quiet. I mean, it's not theatrical or anything. It's just right. like really yeah. reading it out loud. But just mm -hmm. see if it flows, particularly with like dialogue heavy scenes. Yeah. So anyway. do you read it out loud again when you get your page proofs, or do you only do it when you've written it? And then the, your page proofs, you just read it. I don't know. I feel like I'm the the slowest writer, and I just like edit to death everything. So yeah. I feel like I I do every variation of editing that there ex that yeah. exists. 
Well, I've never yeah. read out loud before, and I am. You catch a lot. Wow, you can change a lot when you're reading out yeah, loud. Yeah, I taught my kids to like when they're um, when they take a, like an essay test at school too. Like obviously, you can't say it completely out loud, but you kind of can read in your head, mm -hmm. yeah. like hear the words in your head, or even like mouth them or whisper them, and you catch so right. much. It's crazy. Right. But, yeah, anyway. so I'm hoping next time I'm going to do it. My goal is next time, if I ever write another book, is I'm just going to read it, um, you always say that. it out loud during um, copy edits instead of page proofs. Because yeah. you know how we get that letter that says yeah. you're only allowed X number of changes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that by chapter four. I'm like, uh oh. Yeah. That's what I've been doing all week, Kathy. How about you, Mary Alice? Well, I'm. Um it's been a long summer, long spring. Um, I actually have, uh, I had a lot of projects. I had my first middle grade book, which was finished and edited. And so that's uh, The Islanders and that's done in and waiting to come out. And then we did a short story and Patty's involved in that project for a book. It's an anthology beach reunion. And so writing that novella was an exercise and that's done and I shoved it off. And I'm behind everyone else. My novel isn't done, but it will be done. <laughs> Her editor's I'm still during my sprints, and <laughs> it's a coming. It's I'm giving birth. I'm still in labor pains. In the first year, I finished. Um, I finished my book um, Christmas Eve Day. When I was like Scarlett O'Hare, I was like, I will never, as God is my witness, I will never put myself through that again. I've done so that, Kathy. Finished. You're so smart to say that. It's horrible. It's like it's Christmas oh. Eve. I want to yeah. have cake and uh, champagne, and no, I got to work. I don't even, I, you know, I, it's a blur. But anyway, I um, we started sprinting May first, and I finished um, I finished the first draft uh, Labor Day at noon. So um, I'll, I'm cleaning it up, and then I'll send it to Jen, Emily's um, former editor and mutual friend. So I feel I feel somewhat relieved, but there's so much work to be done. Anyway, yeah. so now let's ask Emily to tell us about The Lies That Bind. Well, let's see. The Lies That Bind is about a young reporter, Cecily Gardner, um, who's living and working in New York City. And she meets um, she meets a guy at a bar late one night. She's actually uh, kind of nursing a breakup and going through all those emotions of, of breakup. But she meets this guy and he's absolutely amazing. He's perfect. Um, and in the aftermath of 9-11, she discovers that he's uh, not what he seems to be. So the story is, is a bit of a mystery and it's about our own kind of search for authenticity and, and understanding, you know, who we are. Um, and as much as we tell each other lies in our relationships, um, we can. Uh, we could. We also tell ourselves. We we tell ourselves lies as well. So it's sort of about Cecily understanding like who she is and her quest for, you know, and in and figuring out who this mystery guy is. So, and it's so timely that you're here tomorrow. I mean, day after tomorrow yeah. is the anniversary. Today is today is nine nine, and two days from now is nine eleven. You know, it's it's crazy when you was when I was writing it. I'm thinking it was just a few years ago, a few years ago. But it's like yeah. it's, it's, it's historical fiction. I mean, it's twenty right. two decades past almost. It's crazy. Um, it is hard to believe. Time has gone. Um, that was one of my you know, the book is really even though it's it has a you know nine eleven component to it. It's um, in in many ways like the reason that I chose to set it at that time had more to do with that like last summer of innocence. You know, because a lot happened mm. in the book before 9-11. It's sort of the summer of 01. To me, it was such a vivid time. It was, um, I was living in New York and practicing law and um, ended up quitting that job and moving to London to write um, full time. I hoped that was the plan to write a novel. I wrote something borrowed my first year there. So it's kind of a, an intense time, I think, for a lot of people when we look back and think about New York City and how innocent we all were and mm -hmm. how could we not have known what was coming. Um, but mm -hmm. also in my own life, it was such a poignant um, time that it was, there was something very satisfying about going back to that summer and, and writing a book at that time. But I think 9-11 was a good device for and it was weird how much it was mirrored when the book came out with everything that was going on with, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and the coronavirus and everything else. But I think these really big events 
in our in in the world can sometimes um you know of course they impact us in obvious ways but also i think there's this whole thing that goes on internally you know we t touched on it a little bit earlier with your first question but you know you you ask yourself like am i living the life that i am meant to be living or is this relationship right for me i mean i can't tell you the number of sadly like four or five friends who are um, either going through really big breakups or divorces mm -hmm. um I know, you know, we know a couple of authors who are going through that. Um, and it's just, it, I think it's because when these big things happen, it causes you to re, you know, really have this internal, um, you know, all this reflection of, is this the job I want? Is this the relationship I want? Like, to, should I be commuting to work every day when I could be here and spending more time with my children? Or maybe it's the reverse, like, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, so yeah that's the other reason i kind of said it at that at that um at that crossroads patty you've got a question right emily it's so good to see you i love you patty i know i am love... one of my very dear friends i mean i love you all but we're very very close and we're both born on march 20th yeah we we're both born on the same day we both both born same George. and our first book came out in the same year and we we had to do these Kathy, Mary Kay Andrews, do you remember when me and you and Emily did that event? What was it at Neiman Marcus? I think it was yeah. at Bloomingdale's. Oh, fun. Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's. That was the one where Mary Kay can't remember meeting me, which you could just <laughs> edit out of your repertoire. No, Mary. <laughs> I remembered meeting you, but I remember nothing else because I was on pain meds. I just had been... okay. I'm just teasing you. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, that drink looks very good, Mary Kay. Can you have that again? What? Your drink. You should. Oh, get that. oh yeah. Right. Everyone, yeah. hold up your drinks. Strawberry. Oh, yeah. La la. This and water. I can. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> well, well, Mary Alice, judging by um, <laughs> where you are in your manuscript, Mary Alice, I think that's an appropriate beverage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was fine. You guys can all have a glass of wine after what? What? I'm going to <laughs> I've always been writing on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or thereabouts. So the worst. You guys all are impressive to me. But continue. What were you going to ask? Oh, okay. So what a year this has been. It's like yeah. nothing like it ever. And you had on. Um, I love watching your Instagram because oh, you're you. open and you're honest and you're vulnerable Ooh. and you're obsessed with London like I am and with the Royals. But you posted this amazing thing a couple months ago, and I know I wrote to you personally about it, but I'm gonna read it because I want you to talk about it a little bit. Um, you say, for myriad reasons, some obvious and universal and some too personal to share, the last few months have been really tough. Like a lot of people, I've been depressed and scared and unmoored, but I've also been more introspective than I've ever been before. I've done more thinking and reading and soul searching and talking to trusted friends about life and love and relationships and race and power and privilege and pain. And it's led to a feeling of humility and calm and personal growth along with a shifting of priorities. So I just want to take a moment and say thank you to those people who were there for me, who challenged me, who inspired me. I am grateful, I am hopeful and my heart is full and now I'm all choked up. <clears throat> and it's just so, like when I read it, when you posted it, I was like, there she is. That's that, Emily, I know. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about it. Well, I mean, I think it just is all those cycles of emotion that we were talking about earlier when, yeah. you know, it's, 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 there's so much pain and you're reading these stories and it's just daily, agony for you know our friends out there and our fellow citizens in america and um these there's just so much going on and i think there's the pain and then there's also the way that that causes you again to reflect on your your own life and and kind of put things in perspective yeah. and um you know you you realize who you know, your true friends are and what really matters and you let go of some of the small things. I mean, you know, the, as, as, as authors, we get very, you know, we're, we're worried about our, our launch and the book doing well and being, you know, selling and being well reviewed and we want our readers to be happy and all of that. 
And when, when your launch kind of, it, it, it was such a footnote to this year with my book coming out. And of course, I still so appreciated everyone who read it. And, um, you know, my friends and family were there for me, but it just didn't seem like a very important thing. I mean, as, as important as books became to me in this time, my own kind of career and book launch was like, oh, like who, you know, who really, who really cares? Like there's so many more important things out there. And I think that's kind of what I mean. And I think relationships that were, um, you know, I, I'd like to think that I got rid of all like toxic relationships in my twenties, which was sort of what something borrowed was about. But I think we can, we all tend to get caught up into, you know, relationships and friendships and situations that aren't really worth the effort we put into them. Yeah. And we, um, whether it's because we're trying to be, you know, a perfectionist or project a certain image or because we just want to be a good person so much. I mean, that's of course very important. Those, those things can be important, but when you strip it all away, um, you know, what, what defines us as, as people, you know, and it's like, what I write about it's, it's our it's our relationships it's our, mm. our it's our friends it's our you know our marriages and our kids and and all of that and I think that that some painful things happened um, to me this summer <clears throat> and you know again personal things difficult things to deal with but it helped me kind of um, really focus on I mean it, it sounds so like cheesy and like focus on the, on gratitude, like really focus on gratitude. And as much as I've tried to keep a gratitude journal before and, you know, said that I'm going to do it. And like, you get those little novels that like paper sort, like those little, those yeah. little books at paper source that say list five, you know, you do it and you're like, I'm going to do this. Um, and then it kind of just falls by the wayside and like you get to it or you're not, or it's, it's a chore, but this was sort of a concentrated effort. The other thing that I did was jigsaw puzzles because that really, like I just do these like puzzles and I would sit at my kitchen counter and my husband and two boys went drove cross country to train They're big runner, cross country runners. And so my daughter and I, Harriet and I were left kind of home and we had no schedule and we kind of lounged around a lot. They're, they're go getters. And, and we're sort of like sloth like. We tend to. <laughs> so there was a lot of just like jigsaw puzzles, and I'll have another glass of wine, and what movie should we watch? And in that, all of that time, I think I had an emotional few days around July 4th. And I, and I wrote that post because I wanted, I wanted to share that. And I, I think also kind of remind people of, um, of, of, of that centering that we all need to do. And, and it's a good time. It was a good time to really think about that and think about, in our case, the privilege we have and what are we doing with it and, um, you know, the pain that other people are going through. And so it was just, it was, it was a lot converging at once. But I, I, I would guess that every single one of you had, had moments like that. Absolutely. Um, you you, you I'm an over poster, though. I post like five times a day. So like no, it's going to happen. Like I'm inevitably going to share that. Um, on Instagram with, when other people might not share that. I'm very open. But Emily, in sharing it, you made it okay that we were feeling that way, right? Yeah. So when you posted it, it makes you say, you know, it is universal. We're all, yeah. we're all, we're all hurting. We're all figuring this out. It was beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I do think that there's a, the tendency, we, we tend to think that other people have like perfect lives. Yeah. You know, we look, we, it, it, it's an easy thing to do. You know, you look at a marriage from the outside or you look at a, you know, other people's children or you look at, you know, in, in social media has made this worse. And, you know, I think we are all, we're all suffering in our own ways. And I think that's, it's, it's important sometimes to share that, particularly when you have something of a voice or a platform and you can kind of say, you know, this is what I'm going through. And it's not just puppies and, you know, and, and rainbows. Kids and yeah. And the yeah. queen. So, although well, the queen is really oh, important, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, she's everything. <laughs> you go on a book tour. You go on this fabulous trip to to London, where you were nominated for a, 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 a award, and um, you're getting to do all these things. And I'm just like coattailing off Patty's um, experience and reposting everything, like <laughs> and stories. And I'm like, and another thing from Patty, and another thing from Patty. And oh my gosh, look at this, like bird that patty saw <laughs> <laughs> because the bird is in london and near the queen i know <laughs> wasn't it in the courtyard of westminster abbey yes i think it was but 
Oh, um, yeah, that was a beautiful oh. trip. I looked for the queen for you. I did. I looked for <laughs> right mom. So, with the we, have the queen, we have the queen in the back seat of my car and my mother's car. So like, okay. you know, like the decal. Yeah. So my boys are like, at one point their car was in the shop and I said, you know, can you just take Nana's car? And they're like, we are not taking the queen to school. <laughs> so, come on. That's hilarious. Come on. It doesn't matter. Um, well, I should, I should tell you that I have my picture, a picture of me um, from DC when wow. Diana came to the U.S. to open the Treasure Houses of Great Britain exhibit. And I went up and I was a reporter for that AJC. And I stood on the White House lawn when their helicopter landed and I saw them stand by uh, Nancy and Ronnie Reagan. And I saw Nancy reach out to hold Diana's hand, which apparently she did not get the memo. <laughs> oh, right. But right. I, have this, I have this hysterical picture of me with cardboard cutouts of Charles and Diana with my arm around them. And I sent it to my family at Christmas and they just, they thought, oh my gosh, she, she said, <laughs> Charles and Diana. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, I have a question for you, Emily. Okay. Um, the events of 9-11 are seen through the eyes of journalists, your journalist protagonist, Cecily. And she's even watching the Today Show from her apartment two miles away as the second tower is hit. How difficult was that for you researching it and reliving those scenes? Because I know you must have gone back and, and watched the television footage and all that kind of stuff. Was that, did you have, I don't know, PTSD from that? It, it was, in, it was going back. So I watched the Today Show and I would pause it after every line of like, in a, and I was watching the Today Show when it unfolded. Let me back up. I lived in New York. And I moved to London on September 16th. So my flight out of New York to London was pre-scheduled for September 16th. So my oh, last day at work was like September 7th. And like the going away party that I had was on September 9th. And then wow. I moved into um, the Palace Hotel in Midtown on like the 10th. So I'm in this Midtown Hotel getting ready to move to London when this happens. And I was actually, I had been going through the phone book to try to figure out where to get my driver's license renewed because I had to go meet a friend downtown and he had said, well, let's just meet between the, the towers. And I'm like, I don't want to go all the way down. Like, you, you know, when you live in Manhattan, you don't want to go downtown unless you work down there. But he was like, you know, can you like, I, I, that's really the only way that I can see you. And so I said, okay, wow. well, I'm going to get my, and, and my now husband, then boyfriend said, well, you have to get your driver's license renewed anyway. So why don't you just, go to the DMV that's like near the World Trade Center. It's probably like less of a line than in Midtown or whatever. So I'm like, okay. So I like looked it up in the phone book. I mean, like these are the phone book days. Like, you know, I didn't look it up on my Blackberry or my flip phone, I think it was. I was like, okay, like go through the, like getting the address and trying to figure out where it was. And then the guy that I was meeting, who happened to be my ex, um, interestingly, was um, he said, uh, he called me and said, don't come down here. There's like, like something, there's like an accident here. There's like a, something hit the towers and you could hear in the background kind of like what was happening it was very early on. And that's why I said, he goes, turn on the news. It's probably on the news. So I turned on the news and from that on I'm watching, you know, I always, always watch the today show. Like, so I'm, you know, watching the today show and, and sitting in this hotel room and thinking like, well, I guess I shouldn't go down and get my driver's license renewed, you know, and it's like no. the dawn on everyone. And then I'm like, wow, I should call, you know, and I won't get into the minutia because we all have those stories, but calling my friends who were lawyers who worked at the World Trade Center, getting the fast busy signal because their phones were like not working because, the, you know, one reason or another, or my phone wasn't working. It was just the whole, you know, so when I went back to write that, it was like for me like reliving it because I had been watching the Today Show and I had been living in New York and I had been very close to the site. So it was it was kind of a, a strange, it was, a, I don't know how long it takes you all to write a chapter. I think I'm much slower than you. I publish every other year and I think you all publish every year. Yeah. Um, so uh, one, but what, that scene took me like a month to write, like maybe even six I weeks. Imagine. So I would pause yeah. after every line of the Today Show and write down exactly what happened according to the time that was also on the Today Show and then superimpose like her experience and slow realization onto it so that she was talking to her friend on the phone and then watching the news at the same time. 
Wow. But anyway, so it was definitely a lot of um, PTSD. I mean, I think that's the case for everyone, even if you weren't living in New York or, you know, if you were alive at that time, you have your story, you yeah. know where you were. It's like, you know, it's like our, the John Kennedy generation, yeah, like, right. you know yeah. where yeah. they were. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a lot, but again, that's it. That's a small part of the book. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, so I wasn't, I didn't have to kind of, you know, it, I didn't spend a lot of time with that grief. I just wrote the scene and sort of moved on. Got it. But it is coming up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 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 That was quite a story. You were yeah. right. Oh yeah. yeah. When we took off, like, you know, the plane took off on the 16th, it was the first international, I don't know if it was the first international flight that they let out, but it was, um, it was the first within the first two hours of the first flights. It was that Sunday evening, and um, you know we took off, and it was a, the red eye, but it was still light out because um, it was you know September, you know mid September, so it wasn't dark at that point yet, and you could just see still the smoldering, still the smoke, wow. like five days later, smoke coming up as you took off, and I remember thinking like that I was like such a like like that I was like abandoning. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and and America, and like, how could I fly off and go to England? You know, like my dream place, England, um, in, instead of like staying here and like the grit of it all. But um, so that was there were some parallels there with, you know, I think every book you write has some autobiographical elements, particularly when you're writing in the first person. So although Cecily and I don't have that much in common, we did, you know, without giving the plot away, there were some parallels there with her, um, her relationship with New York. Vis a vis 9 11, I guess you should right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was powerful. That was quite a story. Um, Sorry if it was a little bit of a downer. No, <laughs> no, not at all. But it really kind of leads into my question because you went right to England. And I remember reading your interviews and you were saying how it was difficult for you to wander around because you weren't in America at that time. But I, like you, like Patty, like probably everyone here, I really love London and um, it's my favorite city in the world. And I have this fantasy, which we all probably do, of being able to go and write there or yeah. write in any foreign country where you're setting a book. Just And you spent, what, 14 months there? And so I'm just curious, having done it, you have you done it? Is it a fantasy that we get to go to this country we love and write, or is it actually in reality hard? It's a distraction. I mean, does it help? I mean, what? Tell I, me what it's like to write yeah, that book. I, I would time. say for me as an introvert, it was bliss because my friends and everyone. I I was slow to make friends. I only ended up making a few friends there. I don't know if that's like I've heard that that's like very English. It's hard to sort of penetrate those Londoner circles, but. Um, um, but I didn't make a lot of friends and I was I kind of liked it that way because my friends in New York and back in this, you know, my family didn't wake up till like one o'clock. So I wrote so much, like no distractions whatsoever. Like my phone didn't even work like for months after I got there. I'm in the house line, but not the flat line, but not my, you know, I didn't have a cell phone that worked. And so it was just like, it was, and it rains all the time. It's like perfect weather to write in. I wanted to you know. The other thing, like you're living in England, but you, it's, it's the English language. So it's like, you're not really brave. It's not like I ventured off to Italy and not knowing the language, like eat, pray, love kind of thing. Um, and so, but yeah, I think it, I think it's an ideal setup to write. Um, even if I weren't, and at that point, because there were more scenes I guess there were some scenes at the end of something borrowed, but it doesn't even really matter if you, you don't even need to be doing research. I just mm -hmm. think it's stimulating to be somewhere else, even if you're staying ah, okay. in your pajamas writing. Yeah. Like, do you all ever go to hotels to write for like oh, two yeah. days? Yeah. Every way yeah. Off time. yeah. Always have. That's why I'm fantasizing. Yeah. <laughs> but would you go to Paris <laughs> maybe or to Rome or would you go to a city? Another one, if you set the book there, would you do that? Well, it's, you know, that was before I had children. I wasn't even married and I, had, I didn't, hadn't had children. And so the reason that we moved back, we actually lived there for two years. And um, so then I got engaged there, mar married back in the States. But in that time period, got engaged, got married and got pregnant with twins. And so we moved back because we were having two. We were going to stay with one. That when we found out it was Ooh, two, we said, 
like we have to get home. It's a high risk pregnancy. We just want to be home. So we moved back. Um, and so would I love to do that again? Yes. But like right now, my kids are 13, 16, 16. Like it's not on the cards anytime soon, but I, I, I fear, I, I know how fast it's going to go the next few years. I mean, yeah. how fast it goes. So you never know on the, on the back end of that. I, I, I don't like to ever think that something is the last time you'll do it. Um, but that's, that's uh, so it makes me so melancholy to think like you wouldn't do it again, but I don't know. But fingers crossed we can. I am right. <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. Kristen, you've got a question for her. Yeah, Emily, um, Ma uh, Mary Kay mentioned how the two of you met, but I wanted to tell a story quickly of my own that you may not remember. Um, I, I remember met you, I think, in 2009. Give me a break. We were like totally hit. I don't know what I had on. I had on a navy blue like um, dress that was like hot. I remember it was hot. It had a little hot. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that either. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have pictures from the night. Are you kidding me? Do you think I don't remember that? I think so. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> so sweet, but I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. Well, you know what? I wish I could stay in touch with you, but I was so shy and like so. Um, I was at such an early point in my career, and it seemed like you were in. You were like. Oh my gosh, like you were just, you had the life I dreamed of and you were just this, oh my God, I was like sort of a little starstruck. So I, that's why I didn't stay in touch because I was like, early she wouldn't want to hear from me. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, but, but I, I did, we stayed in touch for a little while. Say, I thought we um, stayed in touch for a little while, but you really did take we, off. We did. Well, yeah, we did. But I, I was like, gosh, I was nothing then. But um, but I, but I wanted to tell a story that um, that has meant so much to me over the years. You were so kind and gracious then, and a year or so later is when I kind of decided to take my career in a different direction. Um, I wanted to be writing bigger historical women's fiction, and I left my agent. I left my publisher. Um, I was very much adrift, and I reached out to you for help. And without reading. My, you know, like without, I didn't have a book deal yet, but you offered me the sweetest, most generous blurb. Um, and I was able to bring that to the new publisher as part of the package. And I think that was one of the things that really helped with the sweetness of forgetting, oh, which was the book that she oh. to in my life. So I've always, I, wow. I don't think I've ever had a chance to tell you that, but that has always stuck with me, just how kind that was. And especially your kids must have been young and you had a million things on your plate and you took the time to do that. So well, I wanted to say. My you're you're very welcome but you're my my blurb had nothing to do with that wonderful book that you had written like you were you were you know you were taking off you were taking off and you know that's the thing like meeting you it's like whether whatever wherever you are in your career you can kind of remember the beginning you remember that first you know you remember where and you seem so beautiful and young. I do remember that because I was in the throes of like three children under the it was 2009 so I had a two-year-old and two four-year-olds. Yeah, that was not a pretty. It was not a pretty time for me. But you were gorgeous. <laughs> um, but no, I, I was, I'm always so happy to do that for 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 other authors, especially ones who I've met and really liked. We were like pals that night. We kind of went around to the different tables and gave yeah. our little analysis. <laughs> I remember. I remember that, but. Um, but yeah, I'm actually I would love to have heard those comments. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And well, Mary in, in any case, we, and Mary Alice, didn't we meet in Winston Salem? Did we never meet in Winston Salem? Am I making that up? Have you been to Winston Salem? I have, but I would have remembered meeting you. I, I mean, because Patty talked about you all the time. Talks. Well, maybe it was maybe it was like early. Maybe like I was the Kristen in this story. <laughs> <laughs> I might, no, uh, maybe. I, I like to think I would have remembered a pretty young blonde. Well, yes, but I think I had brown hair at the time. <laughs> maybe that's as why. I, as, I like to, as I like to tell my children, I, I say, like, I got so tired of dyeing my hair brown. Yeah. It was so it cost so much money. It was so time consuming <laughs> that I just went back to my natural blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and <one> does. <laughs> Yeah, or, maybe, or maybe you were on painkillers too at the time, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, honestly, I don't think we But I'll I'll refresh. I'll I'll think about it tonight. Okay, I don't Christine. Think so, I'm, I'm glad to meet you tonight. 
Christy, I'm going to move on to your question. We're running out of time. All these people are asking us questions, and it's very exciting. Yeah, oh, oh, my gosh. Gosh. I know. The, point, the thing is blowing up. We're never even going to get to it. Okay. Mine's actually kind of a quick question then, so that's good. Um, I think I've... Maybe hold on, my, wait, hold on one second. My thing, my computer says your Mac will sleep soon unless plugged in. That's oh, about. I have to leave. I need to plug in. Okay, I'm going to disappear for a minute. I have to plug in. I think we should maybe. We're so professional. Our announcements, don't you? I mean, no, I want to get to your cover sorry. reveal. That's most hold important. On. Hold yeah, on, I'm going to shout to my kids. Kathy, why don't you do your cover you reveal now while we're waiting, waiting for her to work her computer Yeah, out. do the cover reveal while we're waiting. That's perfect. I'll have to uh, see if Sean can put it up. Sean, can you put it up? Yay! 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 So there, there it is. Oh, my gosh. I love mm -hmm. it. Thank you. I really love it. That's uh, the new summer, next summer's, uh, summer 2021. That's um, I love the pink shark fins. So I'm really thrilled <laughs> about it, and um, it's the first time anybody's ever seen it. Yeah, it's a reveal. yeah, this is a big reveal. Ever. It's so great. May fourth. Show it again. Show it again, Sean. Put it up there, baby. It's a fresh great. new look, all different. Love it. Uh, it has her humor in it, which I love. Yeah. So, um, if you order tonight, through uh, pre-order tonight uh, through Sunday from Acapella. Um, you're going to get the 10% off. You won't get the book until May 4th, but we'll um, send you a, a, one of our friends in fiction koozies. And that's enough about that because um, we're going to... Christy's question. Christy's question. <laughs> yes, my question. Are you good, Emily? Are you plugged in? Well, he, if we die he's here, he's, Buddy's coming hey, with the charger. Well, now come here and Buddy, say Buddy, Buddy, Buddy. Buddy. Okay. Um, I, I might have told this story before on Friends and Fiction, but um, I got the idea for my debut novel when my son was like three days old, which was not probably the best time. But as we all know, when you get an idea for a story, you just sort of have to write it. It kind of takes over your life. But I had so many excuses and so many reasons that this wasn't the right time for me to try to get an agent. It wasn't the right time for me to submit. It just wasn't the right time. And my mom sent me an article about you and about how you, um, signed your first book deal and then found out about a minute later that you were pregnant with twins, no less. And I thought, okay, well, if she could do it with two babies, then I could do it with one baby, certainly. Um, right. I hope, but you <laughs> have really, I mean, spent an entire career being this incredibly successful author, wife, mother, philanthropist, all of these things. And I'm not going to ask you the balance question. I am not going to ask you that. Um, but do you have any advice? <laughs> For people who are, you know, just kind of getting started, we have a lot of writers on this show who feel like they're in the throes of all these things and like maybe they don't have time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I think you're muted. You're muted, Emily. Emily. Yeah. Did you mute? Emily. Oh, no. Yeah. Somebody muted you, Em. You muted yourself, I think, accidentally. Sean, can you? It's right there that? on the bottom. <clears throat> on the bottom left, Em. Okay. Oh. There. <laughs> so while she's it's trying it's to un while she's trying to unmute. Wait, oh. She oh, I'm looking. She says it won't unmute. Sean, oh. can you unmute? It's doing the scrolling rainbow. Why don't we talk about the bookstore Ooh. while we're waiting for this, Kristen? Are you yeah. going? To do okay, that? just wait a sec, Emily. But the, or I can. One thing I do want to remind everyone: while well, Emily's scrolling rainbow is scrolling, <laughs> that as all our watchers know, that Kristen's book, The Book of Lost Names, was such a huge hit that it sold out on, I think, what, day, hour one? I think they were <laughs> yeah. Yeah. very fast. <laughs> so we have a huge announcement and it is finally back in stock. Oh. So Sean, could you give us a little flash of the book? Um, Yay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 
And so if you've been spending time, you know that this has happened. Now it's in stock everywhere. It's been out of stock since the week it came out and we're excited to know and to share that it's back in stock. So tell everyone, you know, it's almost like pub week all over again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're so excited. That was so nice. Such thank you, Patty. Are you back? Thank you, Mary Alice. Thank you. Hey, Patty, would you um, text Emily and tell her to go out, come back in? Oh, she can hear us. You can hear us, right, Em? Um, go out and come back and in. Come back in. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it wouldn't. It really wouldn't. <laughs> If, this is it wouldn't be fans and fiction if something wasn't going wrong, right? Yeah, I mean, this right. Is, yeah, this is this, this is how we love life. Exactly. And the real us. and then come back. You can like, Kristen. Yeah. Do you want to talk about um, bookmarks? But bookmarks. Yeah, real quick. Oh, look. Do you like how oh, I'm not posting? <laughs> Um, you know, I just wanted to say super quickly, um, over the weekend, we posted about bookmarks from North Carolina. Um, they're an independent bookstore, also a literacy nonprofit. They had something terrible happen to them. They flooded. Um, and when we told you about it, more than 150 of you immediately stepped up to donate. Uh, we were floored. We were so touched. And their operations director, Jamie Rogers Southern, came on and said, it really must be true that reading fiction develops empathy. I'm so encouraged that this bleep bleep year hasn't made people hate. It's made people bond together in love. Trust that our staff is deeply grateful. We will recover and continue to serve our community. So to say thank you, we are giving away signed books from all of us, books and book plates, um, to a random winner, one of you who donated. And the winner is Diane McGuire. So she was randomly drawn. Diane, I will um, I will email you tomorrow to get your address. That prize pack is also going to include a book plate signed by Sarah McCoy, who um, is on the bookstore board. Uh, she's another author. She's on the bookmarks board. Um, but to all of you, so Diane, thank you. But to all of you, thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. Um, all five of us friends and fiction authors are so proud to be part of this wonderful, big hearted giving community. And we were so honored to walk among all of you. Yes. So we love you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you for stepping up. While we're waiting for Emily to come back in, um, everybody want to give a shout out to whatever it is you're reading and enjoying right now. I know Mary Alice, you've got a book you want to mention. Sure. I'd love to. My gosh. Emily can't get back in, she says. Oh, I'm really excited. This is a nonfiction, so it's the first time I've done this. It's called Becoming Wild by Carl Safina. Now, I read a lot of books about nature, but this is so eloquently done. It's about understanding the, um, it, you know, for so long people say don't anthropomorphize, don't put human emotions into animals. He is a naturalist, a scientist. He says, yes, they do have these emotions. And he tells beautiful stories that parallel human emotions, animal emotions, human emotions. Obviously, I love that, but he does it so well. He's such an eloquent writer. And also he has, it's been so successful. There are two middle grade and young adult um, versions workbooks for kids. So if you want to get in touch, you want to have that connection with nature, especially if you're stuck indoors. It's called Becoming Wild. And the author is Carl Safina. He's probably my very favorite nature writer. And Christy, you had a couple of books you wanted to talk about, right? Yeah. Well, and since Emily isn't here, I do just want to say, because I really didn't say this tonight, but um, if you have not read The Lies That Bind, I know we all loved this book so much. It was incredible. It was one of those books that um, I was reading it over Labor Day weekend and like I couldn't do anything else. You know, like friends would be, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading. And I stayed up like all night finishing this book. Um, it was just absolutely wonderful. And then to hear her stories about 9-11 and just how that tied in. And it was so interesting to me to be back in 2001 and to think about, we don't feel like it's that long ago, but just all of the cultural references and, you know, what they were listening to, what they were wearing, their cell phones. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, where they were eating. And we were, I mean, it was just really interesting to go back to that time and be like, wow, that really was a long time ago. Um, yeah. so, but it's just, it's a great book on all counts. Um, kind of a little bit of mystery in there too. Yes, yes. Um, 
I am reading The Age of Innocence, which I somehow, I mean, I have a master's in literature, but I never read this book before. I don't know how that happened, but um, it is so wonderful. And we were talking about earlier how sometimes the classics are not as exciting or, you know, but um, this this book just, it's really, it really holds up. It's just such a great book. I'm, I feel like I'm flying through it, like I'm flipping the pages. So um, not our normal contemporary read but um the age of innocence it's a true historical yes oh yeah you know you're talking about how awesome you okay. book so here's what happened i want to say this really quickly my computer with my joe biden sticker here and this computer um did not have chrome so i got this computer and then when i hit mute when I was trying to plug myself in it froze and it kept doing that little wheelie thing and there was no way to do it and so now my family's yelling at me why did you use that ancient computer like that's not helping but anyway, <laughs> I'm so sorry. And you guys are telling me to unmute. I'm like, I, I, it's not my mute button. It's the wheel. Okay, I'm gonna, anyway, I'm I'm so make sorry, a guys. I told we, you I, I'm terrible at this stuff. Uh, we all are. Uh, right, and right. We, yep. we always do uh, a little after show. Um, so, and it, and it, um, it airs. So if you guys will, since we, Emily, you know, we lost her in the ethernet, hang out. Emily, can you hang out with us too? We'll, sure, ask, yeah. we'll ask you some more questions. We'll drink some more stuff. Wait, Christy didn't even finish yeah. her question. Did you? Christy, did you finish your well, question? I, and actually my question works really well for her writing tip too, because I, that's writing tip, I was thinking I'm that. getting at is, you know, when you have all of these things in your life, like how do you prioritize your writing and what does your schedule look like? And I know what I was trying to answer before I realized I was Perfect. muted. It just, I think our, you have to let go of the quest per, for perfection. Like yeah. I think that your mother probably sent you that article, that clipping, because you had been really struggling at that time and probably feeling you know, terrible about your output and probably feeling like you weren't doing a good job in any one category in your life. And she mm -hmm. sent that article and said, look, everyone's going through this. Like yeah. people, you know, young mothers like go through this. And I think that's just to kind of, again, go back to this sense of don't be so hard on yourself. Like just do, do what you can. And some days are going to be terrible and some days are, you know, you're going to write and it's going to feel so easy and effortless and everything will flow. And you just, um, and that's the, the same in relationships, our relationships, sometimes they come together and they feel effortless. And sometimes like, if you could have heard us fighting just now, arguing, yeah. why the hell did you use that old computer? <laughs> like that's not very really what you're doing to me right now when I'm like doing this, you know, so, so that's like, and I think I'm going to put, I filmed him sort of yelling at me because I'm going to put it on my Instagram story because that's real. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Okay, now we've got, people have been asking questions. And so uh, we're going to, we pulled some off the uh, Facebook page and then we're going to uh, ask some that have been coming in live. So uh, Doris Yates Biddix, and we are just going to go over. So if you can't stay, you guys go away, but we hope you will. <laughs> just hang uh, with us. We're going over. This is like the second hour of the today show. Doris Yates Biddix wants to know, Emily, if there's an idea for a book that you just can't write about yet, a story that's just waiting for the right time. Well, I started a book, so, you know, I didn't go on the book tour, so I thought, okay, I can really get started early and get cranking on this one and i started one and it was a little it was just too it was too heavy it was too it it was too heavy for my my soul right. my heart to manage and so i just put it aside and i decided that i would revisit it in um once there's a vaccine you know once we're a little bit on either even footing yeah. I, I started another book in the last few, like the last week, I think if you follow me on Instagram, I've been asking about, the, I've narrowed it, the names, the, the, the baby name choices for this character. So I'm kind of getting into that. But um, so yeah, I think definitely there are books that stories we want to tell, but the moment doesn't feel right to us. You know, we just don't feel ready. So um, that's a great question. Is it Doris? Yes. Doris. Thank you, Doris. Yes. And uh, Mary Alice has a question from somebody too, right? I do. Home. This is from Crystal Harden, and it says, and, and this is appropriate that I ask you this, will your next book finally include a dog? All your readers' heart 
Dolly, Hank, and Darcy. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, <laughs> you know, I, have I really never included a dog? I think there's been dogs, maybe not like a like a key integral like dog <laughs> character, like the dog is like center stage dog plot. Yeah, maybe I'll have to do that. What? Who was the la lady who just asked that um, question? Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. Harden. Okay, Crystal, I'm gonna put a dog in for you. Crystal, what? Do, uh -huh. you, you ask Crystal. <laughs> people again? demand more. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they watch out now. We're the model. Uh, we're an after the show now. Well, I started yeah. writing. I love I Sean and that's dog. awesome. <laughs> Dogs are awesome. Okay, who wants to ask another question that we've pulled? Um, I can um, ask. One. Okay, yeah. Can you live? yeah. Sean, do you want to run us alive? Or I've taken the liberty of pulling a few also. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, Brenda Gaskell wants to know, Emily, what led you to become a lawyer? Oh, Brenda. <laughs> um, you know, actually, I don't regret going to law school. I loved I love school. I love the actual law school. I just didn't like the practice of law. But um, I think that law, you, when you meet a doctor, you, you hardly ever, ever meet a doctor who will say like, oh, I just went to med school because I wasn't sure what else to do or I was afraid <laughs> to chase my like real dreams. I just like, went to med school, but I feel like a lot of people go to law school because they were really good at sort of something in the liberal arts and mm -hmm. they had good grades and they liked school and they were kind of on the nerdy side. And they're like, I'll just go to, I'll just take the LSAT and I'll go to law school. So I think kind of, I fell into that. I was a history major with an English minor and I was just, I knew I wanted to be a writer, but I wanted to write fiction. I didn't want to go into journalism. So I'm like, okay, I'll just go to law school and, and go from there. So it's, it's, yeah. Um, as much as I did not like practicing in a big firm though, I mean, I really do use it all the time and it enabled me to live in New York City. I, I guess I could have lived in New York City if I had been like a struggling writer, but um, it's a lot easier to move there a bit, you know, with a big firm job. Um, and so, yeah, my rambling answer there. Anybody else want to pull a question? If you have time for I love that. <laughs> Cheryl, I, I can't even that. find this guy. Okay, you know, this is one for everybody. If we want to do one more, do we have time? I mean, yeah, no, we don't have time. Yeah. Does yeah. Emily have time? Okay. Yeah. Um, Melanie Falconer wants to know all of us, what is the one thing you're looking forward to doing once everything is opened back up? So Emily, we can, since you're our guest. Oh, you, well, you guys go first. Okay. Um, hostess, Marie Kay, you want to go first? Oh, well, I'm, uh, somebody else go first. I was busy. <laughs> Travel. I want to go, I want to go to London. I really yeah. I want to go to London with Mary Alice. Okay, I'm let's so go. We'll, we'll do a we'll, and PCH and you, duh. 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 You, duh. Can I come and just hop across to Paris while yeah. there? It's my place. All right. You did a little research done. Exactly. We were supposed to go to a wedding in France um, in uh, um, Memorial Day weekend, actually. And we had oh. this plan that I would get off book tour, we would jump on a plane take the train to a friend's daughter's wedding, um, do that, and then, you know, run around the French countryside drinking wine. So I do. Um, yeah. the wedding the wedding happened, but they're going to have the um, party when things, you know, hopefully, pray to God, when things get better, then we'll, we'll hopefully go. So that's what I want to do. You know what I want to do? I want to see all of y'all in real life in real yes. time. In real Thank life. you. Yes. Yeah, same. Yes. same. Yeah. I want to see my mom. mom. You're now part of the tribe. So yeah, exactly. You guys are sweet. Yeah, I want to go hang out. I want to go right with some of you. Oh, come on. I've been talking about that forever. Go to a little, do a little writer's retreat. But who who said that they wrote eight thousand words this weekend? Was that I did, I, I did but that's what Christy you. Used to. Well, no, I, I mean, but well, let, let's, let's talk about Christy. Christy, how many words do you write, like sitting in the car in the pickup line? <laughs> sure. uh, Christy's our word girl. She they they might not good. be that good. They just no, it doesn't good. matter, and you know it doesn't. Like it doesn't. Yeah. It's just the word. That's amazing. Yeah, I did the slowest the word of the weekend. But part of that was because I had been, Patty and I did a writer's retreat in uh, Cashers, North Carolina. Nice. And she basically put the gun in my head and said, because I kept saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I have to, you know, I've got to write this big, you know, um, 
sort of cinematic denouement and I couldn't get there. And she kept telling me I was self-sabotaging and uh, <laughs> but I, I, I wasn't writing a word. So <laughs> <laughs> generous of her to, to, you know, to, to, you know, nag me, but it really did help me over the hump because we sort of sat down and talked about all the points, plot points that I had to cover um, by the end of the book. And so I had, you know, my little handy dandy black and white composition notebook that I um, I wrote down. This is what I have to do. And then once I got home, um, it was like, I have got to do this. So I couldn't have done it if I hadn't, I hadn't been with Patty and her really kind of putting yeah. the gun in my head. You cranked it out. It was awesome. Yeah. I did. I did. It was, I won't say it was a new land speed record, but um, it was... <laughs> Okay, but you know, but I do think for you, Kathy, uh, Mary Kay, you know, it's um, the fact that we didn't have to go on book tour actually made a difference, you know, because yeah, otherwise we're on the road and then we heal afterwards. So you got those, you got that gift of time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's one more thing we have to do. Um, news flash, breaking news. Um, Beth. Woodson has turned 35. We <laughs> Happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Beth. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Beth. We love you for giving us Christy. Yeah. And um, what else do we want to do, guys? I mean, we're just like rolling along here. We should probably let Emily get back to her family. Well, I think you guys should all be special guests on my book club Zoom that I'm doing at 8.30. Ooh. Oh my God! Tonight? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. No. Well, it's at eight thirty, so we have plenty of time. But I don't. I'm not going to do my hair twice. No. In yeah. like you know, because it's usually in a baseball cap, and it's like no, we all do that. We we're all like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stock these things. So I, I think you guys should come yes. onto the Zoom and surprise sure. everyone at eight thirty. Why waste this makeup situation? Listen, I'm gonna send it to um I'm gonna send it to Patty and she can share with you if anyone wants to come on and say hi to this book club. That would be all right. We're gonna all thank you, Emily, so much. Emily, thank you. I'm sorry about the technical difficulty, but you just got a little window into you know, you know, I don't drive on highways, for example. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Know. Like, yeah. Kind of a mess. Emily, but. it would not be friends in fiction if we didn't have technical. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every yes. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Okay, that's well, good. We hope we'll come back again. Yes. Love having you. Chris, thank, thank you all. Yeah. Thank you to all of our our readers out there. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. You're awesome, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.